So on this video, we're going to be continuing on and talking about deep Q learning. So uh, just as a reminder, what the, the problem that we're going to be tackling is going to be called card poll, right? So, uh, so we want to keep that poll as, as long as possible on the card. And these are the inputs that we have, okay? So, or rather the state. We have the card position, velocity, the angle of the poll, and the velocity of the poll at the tip. And there's only two actions that we can take, uh, and that's to go left and right. Okay, so let's uh, let's let's try and uh, play around with this problem. Um, so the first thing that I want to do is talk about the uh, the pseudocode that we're going to be uh, doing for deep Q networks. So keep in mind the the model that we're going to be talking about is this Q function, all right? So it's called the action value function, the quality function. Uh, it's good. It might have a few names, but uh, let's, let's move on. All right, so the first thing that we're going to be doing is we're going to initialize an empty array D for, to store in the data, right? And uh, we'll talk about that data soon. We're going to initialize the model Q randomly, with completely random weights. So actually, it, it might actually be a good idea to jump into the model first before I uh, start talking about the rest of the tutorial. So this is what the model looks like, right? So we have, we have as inputs a number of states and the output will be the number of actions. But I think, so keep in mind in the, in the previous video, I talked about uh, doing Q of ST and then doing Q of ST of AT. Okay, so let me, let me explain why I've done that. So um, this, should, th this bit should be a fairly standard uh, Keras neural network. All right, so uh, just make sure you've done the previous tutorials on neural networks before you jump here. Um, so all we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be taking all the, those four inputs and then we're going to output it into N actions. All right, so in, in this case, I have dense layers in between. So um, the next thing, the next thing that I want is to take it as a function of the actions. All right, so actions in this particular case, because we're going, only going left or right, it's going to be a one hot encoded vector, all right? So it's going to be, if it's going left, it'll be one zero. If it's going right, it'll be zero one. Okay, so what we do in that case is, we, is that we dot it, okay? By doing a dot product, you essentially choose, choose, the, um, choose the, the quality score. Now, keep in mind, what we're trying to do with, with this model is we're trying to model the uh, maximum discounted future reward. Okay, so let me write that down because that's, that's a fairly important point. So what we're trying to model is called maximum future discounted reward. Okay, so, so these things uh, hopefully should start making uh, make sense soon. So let me show you the, Bell, the Mel, Bellman equations, which, which might uh, clear things up. Okay, so, so this, the reason it's a maximum future discounted so the gamma parameter over here is the discounting parameter. We're taking the maximum out of all possible actions of the state, the next state, all right? So it's really important that you understand it's ST plus one that we're doing over here. So Q of ST of a, of a particular action is gonna be the reward that you get for that action plus a discount times maximum of blah. All right, so, so this is what we're gonna be trying to model in our neural network. Right. Okay. So, um, so yeah. So, uh, using OpenAI uh, or rather Jim of OpenAI, we're going to initialize initialize the environment. So let me let me quickly again. I, I know I'm jumping concepts here, but just bear with me. So the environment uh, is a, is a thing that you can take from Jim. So you go Jim.net. In this case, I'm going to be doing the card pool environment. Right. Um, we need to be using environment reset whenever the game, game terminates, right? Because it's undefined, uh, undefined uh, physics after, after the game, game ends. And then this is really important, okay? So environment.step. So what that's saying, given whatever the action is, left or right, uh, so I think zero is left, right is one. Um, it, given, given the particular action, it, it, it remembers what the state it's in, it's gonna output, the next state, st plus one, it's going to give a return, t plus one, and it's going to tell you if the game terminated at that point, okay? Whether by fold, uh, falling over or if it went off screen. Okay, so 
Um, yeah, so what we're going to do um, for the first couple of thousand steps is we're going to be taking completely random steps. Okay? It, it, um, it really, so there's no reason as to why we, we're, we're going to be taking that particular step. So what we're saying initially is we have this uh, a fairly large epsilon value, and with that probability epsilon, we're going to be taking a, a completely random action. Okay. Um, if it's not so, if if, uh, if it's not that prob without the probability, we're going to be taking the maximum action. So the maximum reward that our quality function gives out. Okay. So so this is really the, the essence of it. So the quality function gives out uh, for each state all the possible uh, maximum rewards that you can get for, for any given action. Okay, so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be taking the maximum action. But keep in mind, initially, because um, our model is random as well, even the, like, it doesn't really matter that, because these steps will be random as well, because our quality function is pretty much rubbish, right? So we're just going to be taking random steps. Um, yeah, so given that step, it wants us to, uh, Given that action, sorry, it, it wants us to step uh, step one, one, one time point. So that's what, where we're going to be using in environment that step to go to the next uh, to go to the next state, right? So given that, uh, what we need to do is we need to store in the current state we were in, the action that we took, the return that we got, and uh, the next state that we end up in. Okay, so we're going to keep keep doing that for uh, a few thousand iterations. Uh, before we get to the point where we start playing, okay? Because we want to, we want to observe uh, which moves end up being good moves, okay? So once, once it goes beyond the observation period, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna sample a mini batch of transitions, okay? So from D, we're gonna sample, say, 128 or 250, whatever it is. We're gonna sample a completely random uh, set of that. But I, I should also mention, in the, in the data thing, we're, we're only going to remember, we're only going to remember the last uh, couple of thousand steps only, all right? So D has a limited memory, all right? Anything, anything too old, we don't really care about those moves because we know it's terrible. We didn't have any reason to take those steps. So we, we're, we're going to discard those things, uh, the, the observations that were too old. Okay, so here, uh, here, here, these two, well, these three lines, I suppose, um, are the most important points when it comes to deep learning, uh, reinforcement learning, okay? So the problem with reinforcement learning is really to figure out what the Y value is, okay? So you know that the X value is gonna be a state, all right? So the, the output, the output is going to be a, the quality function, well, not the quality function, the, qual the output of the quality function. And this is, and this is how, we, how we do it, all right? So we're gonna say, if the game terminated, it's simply gonna be, uh, it's the, the reward is simply going to be R, RJ. If it didn't terminate, it's going to be RJ. So the so J is a current time time step. Um, I should have called RT plus gamma times the maximum action of the of the quality function. So let me show that to you in code. So hopefully that it'll make far more sense when I when I show it to you in code. All right. So given a mini batch of data. Right, so the first few lines are just getting out the states, the actions, the rewards, and the next state, okay, and whether it was terminal. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be doing model.predict. Okay, so given, um, given the, the next state, st plus 1, we, we're going to predict what we get. All right? So I'll call it readout. And from the readout, we're going to take the maximum uh, value for all possible actions. So in this case, out of the, out of the two actions, um, what, uh, what, what's the maximum value, okay? So if, if our batch size was 128, this thing will, will, be, will be 128 by two uh, matrix, all right? So we're just gonna be taking the, uh, the pairwise maximums out of those two. And then we're gonna multiply with our discount factor, and then we're gonna add the reward that we got at that particular step, all right? So uh, Y ends up being that. Now, if it did terminate, we want to replace the term, terminated ones with just, just the reward we got at that particular point. All right, so the, 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 the data that we uh, send back will be the state, all right? So the current state, ST, not ST plus one, the action that we took at that point, and Y, all right? So, um, yeah, so keep in mind, uh, when, we, when we're training, when we do model.fit, 
we want to send in uh, the state as well as the actions because we wanted to take the dot product, okay? And the Y value, so remember the Y value is only one value. It's not giving you, Y value is not the 128 by two, it's 128 by one vector. Okay, so let's come back to the pseudocode. I think I, I might have gone a bit too far over there. Uh, so given, so now that you have your Y value and your state and action, you want to take, you want to minimize uh, the mean squared error of this thing. Okay, so, so that is what we're trying to minimize. So this is really what you need to get your head around. Um, when, when, we do, when we're calculating the Y value, we're, we're actually using model.predict. So this, this should seem strange to you, right? So we're actually, it's almost like a loop. We're using the model.predict to get the Y value, and then we're using the model to uh, fit it as well. Okay, so it's almost like a self-fulfilling pro prophecy, but uh, for simple problems like what we're about to do, like the cardboard problem, it does converge. Okay, so it's, it's the keyword over there is convergence, right? So eventually, um, it, it will be unstable in the beginning, it will start converging to a steady state value, and that's why these things work, okay? Um, yeah, so that's, that's pretty much it when it comes to the pseudocode. So let's, let's, let me show you what, what's happening in the code. Um, so the first thing that you do is we're, we, well, I want to find out what the number of states and actions are. So I know it's four and two, but I didn't want to hard code it, right? So we're gonna, we're gonna create a, a random model, okay? So that's what's happening over here. The number of states and number of actions are going in. Initial epsilon is 0.1, okay? But uh, I'm actually gonna decay the epsilon uh, to be smaller and smaller. So the reason that you have these random actions in the beginning is because you want to explore the space. Okay, you don't want to uh, have it a fixed value right right from the uh, like just keep using the model over and over again in the beginning. Um, yeah, so we're going to decay that. So gamma is the discount factor. It's going to be 0.9. I'm going to observe 5,000 steps before I start doing in training, and my data. I'm only going to remember the past 5,000 steps. I didn't, I, need, I didn't need to choose these two things to be the same. Like it, it could have, it probably should have been different. But uh, yeah, anyway. So, and the training time limit I said to be 100,000. Uh, so it's not 100,000 episodes. I probably should have said the number of episodes. Basically, each iteration I take to be a single uh, time step. I, I just want to train to 100,000. And the batch size is 128. Okay, so I reset the environment, okay, get the initial state out. And what we're going to be doing is we, well, right at the beginning, we don't really know anything, so we're just going to take a random action over here. That's what's, that's what's happening over here. Uh, okay, so let's jump in to the for loop. All right, so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to predict uh, from, from the model that outputs only, uh, the, the model that outputs the maximum reward for both actions. Okay, so we're going to read out over here will be something by two. Okay, uh, and then we're going to take, we're going to take the maximum output. Okay, so we're going to take the maximum value and take that particular action, all right? Otherwise, so, so with 10% probability, uh, we're just going to take a random action otherwise, okay? Now, if we, um, if we got to the point where, maybe, Okay, so over here, we're, we're stepping that action over here in this line, and then we're going to be appending the, the information that we get. So the state, the action, reward, and ST plus one. Okay, so once we observe uh, the, those 5,000 random steps, we're gonna start, we're gonna start training. All right, so we choose a, a random batch size over here. So these two lines are choosing a mini batch. And uh, so this function, train data function over here is, is just a, like is what I showed you before. It's going to, given this mini batch and my model, I called it out. Uh, it's going to give me the, the state and the action. So these two things will become my X and Y batch will become my, will, well, Y batch is Y. Okay. And we, we, want to, we want to train on that single batch uh, and get what the loss function is. Okay. And after that, we, we uh, so after, after, this, after this bit, we're going to update our state and we're going to keep looping through, okay? Now, I might have gone a bit too quickly, but please look at my, my notebook. It's, it's a bit more detailed uh, and hopefully it'll, it'll make a lot more sense. Now, one thing that I do 
is I, I actually go here, I call it uptime, but I, I suppose I should call it accumulator reward. I should have saved, um, so I started saving that. Okay, so the, so I saved the sum of the rewards. And um, you start seeing, like, right at the beginning, it just drops off. And then for some random reason, it actually stays up for 97 uh, steps. But, and then it dives down. But it, and then we start seeing it's, it's starting to increase, right? So the, it starts to stay up for longer and longer, right? So it gets to 198 and then has a bit of a drop. But um, anyway, so one, th one thing about deep Q learning is that it is a bit sensitive to the gamma parameter that I choose. And it's actually sensitive to a lot of these parameters that I choose. But the thing is, uh, given enough time, this would, this would have done a great job. And it does a, uh, a pretty decent job. So uh, just putting the accumulated reward, you start seeing that there's a, a pretty decent gap. It, it dies down and then starts to, it starts to learn. Okay. Now, when it comes to loss, when I put the loss, um, in the beginning, it does drop. Okay but it's, it's very noisy, okay? So deep Q learning is one of the fundamentals of reinforcement learning. There are other methods uh, which, which do better jobs when it comes to this, but keep in mind this, this is very much introduction, introductory level. I, I will be doing more videos on this, but yeah. Um, yeah, so once, once I do the plotting, so this is the card hole just going randomly, but once I use the model, which, which, I'm, which I'm using over here, all right, so I'm going in the beginning, it's just a random, random step because I don't have any information. Uh, but after that, I, I go using my model, I predict, take the readout, and I'm going to be taking the maximum, uh, the maximum reward that it, it tells me to take. Okay, so once I do that, it, uh, it stays up for 114 times less. Okay, so that's, that's the result over here. So if you have any questions or comments, uh, please let me know. Or, and before I go, I should, I should uh, show you. Um, I actually did the same, uh, the same notebook. I, I, I copied the same notebook, but I changed the environment. So instead of using cart call, I used an environment called, um, I think, mountain cart, I believe. So just to show you, so when it was completely random results, it just swayed back and forth a bit. But when I trained it a bit, it started pushing up. So now this one, I didn't get to the, get to the goal, unfortunately. Uh, because it, it was a bit of a harder problem. I think the trick is to go back and come back. Um, so yeah, so you can see that it's, it's starting to train a, a lot better than doing it random, right? Doing random steps. So, uh, but it, and um, the only thing that I changed was the environment. All the other steps were exactly the same. Okay, so, so that's really the key word, uh, key thing behind reinforcement learning. You're using the same kind of um, model to go ahead and train other other environments, other other tasks, I should say. So that's that's a key thing. We we're using a similar model to go ahead and train different tasks. Um, if you have any questions or comments, uh, please feel free to ask them below. Please subscribe, uh, hit like on my repository. I've, I've posted the code links below. And uh, thanks for watching.